they are calling clear for tonight and apparently it's going to be the last clear night for quite a while so i really want to make tonight count and since we have a about a 70% moon to deal with, it's going to be hard to shoot anything dim, which is why I'm going for the brightest target in our entire night sky, the Orion Nebula, which is designated as Messier 42. This is an extremely, extremely bright nebula, and you can get this super easily. In fact, you can see it with your naked eye, even in like suburban areas. Now let me tell you, this target isn't all that easy to shoot, and the reason why is because it can be very difficult to get an HDR or high dynamic range image because the core of the Orion Nebula is extremely bright, and with long exposures, you can completely make it white while the outer stuff is rather dim, for Orion standards that is. So I'm going to have to take separate data of short exposures for the core then longer exposures for the outer stuff, blend the data together using processing software, and hopefully get a successful image that way. So we will see how this turns out. I got my equipment plugged in here, and now I'm going to turn everything on so it can use its internal heating system to keep everything warm because we don't want everything getting too cold or anything. You know, since ASI Air is a computer, it obviously stays warm. And then same for the camera and the guide camera. So if you come out here in like a super frosty morning, you'll notice none of those three actually have any frost on them whatsoever. So that's why you actually don't have to worry about keeping dew or frost off your cameras uh, because the internal heating systems will even heat up the bodies enough to keep the dew off. And of course we use things like dew shields to keep the dew off our telescopes or we can use dew heaters to keep them off our telescopes or guide scopes if we have refractors that have lenses. But Newtonians, usually a dew shield that just increases the length of the tube should work. Now we will be putting this dual narrowband filter, which is the Optolong L Enhance, in front of the camera on the coma corrector. Now what this filter is going to do, in case you're new to Astro and don't really know how dual narrowband filters work, is this will block out all wavelengths except the wavelength of light that is emitted by hydrogen alpha and oxygen three. So things like light pollution, which I don't really have much of anyway here, will be completely filtered out but this also helps with moonlight. Now, since the O3 filter does let quite a bit of moonlight in, the AJ will make up for it because it becomes super punchy and way, way more punchy than you would get with broadband, especially broadband and moonlight. So that will definitely help make up for it. Now, you typically want to image the Orion Nebula in broadband, but since tonight we obviously have a moon that we're dealing with, and since I'm going for more of that core region and not trying to get the broadband dust on the outskirts, I'm going to just use narrowband and see how this turns out. Man, this is a beautiful sunset. You gotta love snowy weather. Snowy sunsets are just so beautiful. We got some nice thin wispy clouds too, which of course you don't want when you're doing astrophotography at night, but for evening and sunset time like this, it is just absolutely beautiful and makes the sunset a lot more colorful too. All right, so we're out here. We're gonna get everything connected up to the phone and start up our imaging process. And we are going to start out with polar alignment. Then we're gonna move on to collimation and focus. Okay, so now we're going to go into the PA mode. It's gonna take a quick exposure, about two seconds. And it's gonna plates off that. And it's gonna find where it is. And now we hit next and it's gonna automatically move there. And it just took the first sub and plates off it. And then it's gonna give us a calculation. So of course we don't have any optical polar scope like on the mount. And because of that, we are way off. We're one degree off east and west. So we're gonna have to definitely do a lot of adjustments here. So of course you can see now, we're a lot closer to being polar aligned. Okay, and right there we are in the arc second. So that will be good enough. And we're gonna hit finish. And then we're going to go to the mount. By right, that, we're gonna press go home. It's gonna slew back. I'm gonna go ahead and slew to the Orion Nebula. And the reason why is there are some very bright focus stars right in the Orion region that we can focus on and collimate on. So we're just gonna go ahead and slew there. So of course we are in focus, but right here in a two second exposure. Look at that nebulosity in a two second exposure. That is absolutely crazy. This target is crazy bright. You can very easily blow out the core and just make it pure white because it is crazy, crazy bright. So we do seem to be collimated. We got those donut holes nice and center. So now we are going to focus up. 
by turning the focus knob on the side of the telescope. And we're gonna take a, an exposure and just see if the stars are much sharper so we can progressively track our focus as it gets better. It was a very beautiful, cold, and snowy night, but I got an image I am very happy with, and I think it turned out amazing. I end up using two minute exposures for the outer parts of Orion, and then I end up using 10 second exposures for the core. I blended them together and did the rest of my image processing and got this image.